Hi, everyone. I'm Rosemarie Miller here with Seth Matlins, the Managing Director of Forbes CMO Network. Thank you so much for joining me today, Seth. Oh, I'm so glad to. Hey. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the value of Super Bowl ads. And Seth, what is the value of a Super Bowl ad? How much is it worth? Well, value is different than cost, of course, right? So value depends on what, what the marketer does with it. But if we start with cost, Right. This year's this year's 30 second spot, I think, is pretty much the same as last year's, which is about seven million for a 30. But of course, that just buys you the time. It doesn't account for all of the time that went into putting the the idea together, the production. And as we're going to see on Sunday, Rosemary, a whole lot of celebrity talent. So even a 30 second spot could cost an individual marketer easily upwards of 10, maybe upwards of $20 million. But the value, of course, is what they do with it. How good was the idea? How much did they leverage it in advance of the game? Um, and what do they do with it post-game, right? Does it help sell or does it help facilitate a sale over time? Mm -hmm. That's and I what value is. Taylor Swift, she's going to be there as well. So do you think people were scrambling for Super Bowl ads this year because they knew there'd be more eyes on the Super Bowl? No, I don't think Taylor has much to do with uh, the client side, the marketer side demand for this. The Super Bowl has over decades been the most watched television program year after year after year after year, with very few exceptions over decades. In a world where attention and people have become so fragmented, it stands as the last true mass market, um, mass market vehicle and event. I mean, we expect 125, 130 million viewers this year. Taylor might like bring in a few more um, Swifties, but that's not of interest or meaningful differentiation for the marketers who have been buying these spots. Can an ad actually end up harming a company in any way? I mean, yeah, is it possible? Yes. Is it likely in this environment? No. Um, but we already are seeing some people um, taking some of the ads the wrong way. And if people take things the wrong way or if the creative just is, is tone deaf, um, yeah, it, it can be deleterious for sure. But yeah. Um, I don't know that it's enduring harm per se. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about last year's Super Bowl and how they had FTX and how that went so left and that had nothing to do with the Super Bowl. But there was also Coinbase and they had like a very simple ad and it was just a QR code. What That's two years ago, yeah. That was two years ago, okay. So what actually makes a good Super Bowl ad? I think what makes a good Super Bowl ad is the same thing that makes a good ad of any kind, right? Which is that it's built around some human truth or insight, that it's it's clear about a problem that the product or service is solving for its audience or the opportunity it's creating for them, that, that it helps to sell in some way doesn't have to sell today. The Coinbase ad, which um, was done by Droga5, is interesting in that with that QR code, they went to immediate action. Most of the ads that we're going to see are what we call top of funnel. They're broad awareness. They're designed to drive mental availability and interest, right? They're not performance-based in and of themselves in that moment, though I could be surprised with what we see on Sunday. Um, but what makes a great ad is that it gives me some reason why I'm going to consider or buy, again, this product or service. Um, what I think marketers in particular in this context, in the context of the Super Bowl, have to be aware of. And I wrote a piece a couple of weeks ago for LinkedIn on LinkedIn that said, I have anticipatory disappointment about what we're going to see on Sunday's game, because historically, we've seen from my perspective, a lot of marketers waste a ton of money because they confuse celebrity as a media strategy with celebrity as a brand strategy. Celebrity is a way of um, serving as, as media and metaphor. It captures people's attention. But what do you do with that? And in the Super Bowl, where it'll be interesting to see what percentage of ads have celebrity talent in them, there's kind of a celebrity see of sameness. And people confuse the talent 
with the message. And if we leave and we're like, oh, I love that Ross and Rachel ad, as opposed to I love that Uber Eats ad, then it didn't really land. Mm. Well, how much does a Super Bowl ad typically cost and have those costs really changed over time? Yeah, they've changed appreciably over time. This year and last year, as I mentioned before, it's about $7 million for a 30 second. There'll probably be a break for those marketers um, who are buying 60 and we may even see some 90s. But I think it, it, it's up about 40%, if I recall. Actually, let me just check. So I'm, it's up 22% in three years and 40% in seven years. And if you go back to the beginning of of uh, the, to the early aughts, it was about 3 million bucks, so over 100% in 20 something years. Um, and, and you know, demand outstrips supply. And then, of course, there's all the regional buys. That's just a national buy. Well, Seth, could you give us a brief history of the Super Bowl ads? Well, I, I am no Super Bowl ad historian, but but I think if if you think about when this started to become an event, you know, two I, I would point to two of the most classic and lauded ads of all time. In 1979, the Coca-Cola company, who's been a you know was at the time a longtime partner of the NFL, ran the classic Mean Joe Green ad, right? Where where you know the, this this Hall of Fame football players walking. He was played for the Pittsburgh Steelers for those too young to remember the legend that is Joe. He's he's walking off the field and and he's in the tunnel and there's a little kid and and you know Joe is is all sweaty and he the kid hands him a coke and Joe throws him uh, um, his jersey and says something like. Um, hey kid here's something for you, but maybe m maybe the most you know lauded of all time is Apple's 1984 ad which not coincidentally ran in 1984 and what what those marketers began to do was eventize the moment and then as we shared you know as I shared earlier <clears throat> as media has fragmented as attentions have fragmented marketers have been using this platform as a singular platform to reach tens, hundred, you know, over a hundred million people now. Um, but what actually what this, this reminds me of is back to your question about what makes a good ad. A good ad does not lose sight of a marketer's audience versus the game's audience. Because for most of the marketers who will be advertising, their audience is going to be a segment of, a sub-segment of the 125 million people, give or take not the 125 million people. And some some folks have historically lost sight of that. Well, Seth, is there anything else on your radar regarding Super Bowl ads that you believe should be on ours? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, it, it's become this moment where, where we all tune in to see the game and many of us tune in to see the commercials. And actually there are probably some people who tune in to see the commercials and the game as the interstitial. Um, I hope that... I hope that my anticipatory disappointment from two weeks ago is that I get to mea culpa this on Monday morning and, and issue bravos and bravas to the marketers who took advantage of the moment, took advantage of the platform. And back to your very first question, ensured not just that there was a high cost to these spots, but a massive value. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Seth. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Enjoy the game. I will. And I'm there for the ads.